Hello. You can know me as Dennis. I am using this method of media because unlike my travel companion I am still too nervous to use any part of my voice or likeness. My travel companion goes by Bearheart. He is a hermetic magician and Germanic occultist. A member of a magical lodge known as the Grand Order of Dragon Slayers. A group that has been very active in the astral and physical realms in helping overthrow the crippling influence the Illuminati and the interdimensional race of reptilian beings that help bolster and control them. I have asked him to come with me as I was given the opportunity to meet with a Native American woman who claims that she knows the location of a cave which leads to an underground city where reptilians have lived for many thousands of years. I came across Bearheart's channel doing some research into this subject. I was impressed at his depth of knowledge that seemed to go beyond petty arguments and the same old internet information that has been cut and pasted over and over again. He had also mentioned that he had at one time possible encountered such a creature in Dulles, New Mexico and I must admit I was interested in meeting a man that claims he wrestled one and survived. His belief in the higher potential for humanity was also refreshing. I was nervous in meeting him, but that quickly passed. He is very friendly and I immediately felt like I've known him before. I shook his hand and felt his vice-like grip and I then better realized that he means what he says, that magic encompasses the whole person and all of it should be strong. When he says he is a son of Thor, I could believe him. We drove most of that night and I heard stories and bits of information of magic and the occult that I had never heard before. I was concerned that I was going to meet another bookstore occult dabbler, but what he said shifted my perceptions so much I can honestly say Bearheart was the first person to convince he is legit. We were stopped at the checkpoint crossing state lines, something that looked like a joint operation of military, law enforcement and homeland security. They had people, including children standing outside in the cold searching vehicles and telling people to hand over their cell phones and laptops. I shouldn't go into detail but Bearheart spoke to the people and brought them together. Bearheart spoke openly against this and a number of the men and women in uniforms began to look ashamed of what they were doing. The issue is something I cannot say, but it was resolved and we were on our way again. I believe that Bearheart's presence made a significant difference in the outcome. We headed southwest and along the way at a gas station Bearheart strikes up conversation with a pretty Mexican girl. She tells him her grandmother is a witch and reads cards. Bearheart charmed our way into meeting her. Her granddaughter translated and she gave both myself and Bearheart amazingly good details of our lives and recent events, and even gave Bearheart a candle with the image of St. George on it, saying he says you need this, it's from him, oh my, he is here, please take this from St. George to you. I was astonished. We were even asked to stay the night and have breakfast in the morning. We did. The next part of our drive was very relaxing. Bearheart asked if we could stop and buy some beer and some candles. At the side of the road he lit the candle from St. George and asked his spirits to protect us and asking special blessing from Thor and Hercules, he poured the beer onto special symbols for each spirit he drew on the ground and we were on our way. In the late afternoon we reached our destination. A house off the grid and an older woman working in her yard. She was very cautious of us and even claimed to have dreamed of us, maybe me, but definitely Bearheart coming to her home. Bearheart was covered in blood and smiling she said. She could tell he was a magic worker and was nervous of him. Bearheart assured her she had nothing to fear from him, but she was still wary, saying people like him are always struggling between light and dark. Bearheart agreed with her and said he prays every day that his feet are set in the path of good. She walked with us until the cave she mentioned was in sight and told us we were on our own. Bearheart asked about the history of the cave. She said it was called the snake nest by her people and if you left gold or blood offerings at the entrance of the cave, the snake people would give you advice or maybe perform favors for you. She said that they sometimes demanded a child be given herbs to make it sleepy and placed inside the cave never to be seen again. Bearheart looked disgusted at this and was very eager to get the cave. The woman told us that the cave was very deep and dark, that a few of her brothers used to go into that cave and couldn't get very far before they came to a very steep decline. Her brothers would often have nightmares for weeks afterwards warning them not to enter the cave. Bearheart and I walked the rest of the way to the entrance. 
Bearheart said he could feel very dark and heavy psychic energies and that it would be unwise to enter the cave, that this was not just one entity but many dwelled inside, mostly non-human, but a number of human spirits were also trapped here and being feed off of, something that he has to change, that these human spirits must be set free. Bearheart did a number of divinations, with what he said were runs carved on the set of turtle bones. I could feel my skin prickly and chill as he silently conversed with the spirits that came to oversee his run reading. Bearheart told me that this cave contained almost 70 human spirits, most children who were feed off of physically and now spiritually for the interdimensional and physical reptilian entities that still live in the tunnel systems connected to this cave, all of them in a great deal of confusion and torment. I asked Bearheart if they reptilian spirits knew that we were here. He told me that they did and that they would easily overtake us if we entered too deep inside the cave. He said St. George was preventing them from establishing full psychic links to us and that Bearheart and Hercules would cause such a distraction in the ritual he was going to perform that St. George would be able to enter in the astral placeholder for this cave in the physical world and free the trapped human souls. I should tell you all that the feelings I began to experience scared me deeper than anything else I have ever known and that dark. Heavy energy began to compress my chest and it became hard to breathe. Bearheart created a circle of rocks and salt and purified the area with an incense blend he had brought. The heaviness began to fade. Bearheart said he would perform the ritual at midnight and that I should get some sleep. That no matter what do not leave the circle that almost anything we see or hear will be the reptilian and or other evil spirits who are attracted to this area trying to draw us out of our protection. I did sleep but my sleep was not restful and my dreams are short vivid scenes of awful despair and confusion of waking up in utter darkness and feeling teeth and claws drink my blood and eat my flesh screaming for my parents to help me but only hearing cheers and laughter from true monsters. Bearheart told me that a number of the human spirits were at the entrance of the cave and I was picking up on their experiences. Bearheart woke me up in almost a panic. He was naked and had painted script and symbols on his body and parts of his face with a dark colored paint, he had a lantern going and told me to give him room and no matter what not to leave the circle, things were about to get wild. I have been sworn to secrecy about what I saw, but Bearheart in a crazed trance enacted a scene of the story of Hercules, as an infant Hercules found two serpents in his bed sent by his stepmother Hera. Hercules strangled the two serpents with his bare hands. Bearheart in a rage used to specially prepared symbolic representations of the serpents and cried out death oaths to the reptilians entities I the cave and became a madman and so violent in his actions that I ducked for cover and was utterly terrified. The whole area seemed to take on a new feel and Bearheart I could tell was now just a flesh vessel for something else, I am guess the spirit of Hercules. He picked up some larger rocks from the circle, he is a strong man very strong and I watched him carry those stones with two hands to the circle. I was now watching Bearheart hurl these stones which had also been marked with symbols with paint with one hand and well within the cave, it seemed like his physical strength had definitely been augmented. I did my best to keep the camera rolling, but with some much movement and getting out of the way on Bearheart now roaring and screaming and thrashing and hurling rocks and cuss worlds and death threats and swinging around a large piece of wood like a club it was hard enough. What happened next I couldn't handle. I am only human. I have my breaking points. The sound that came out of that cave was not human, it was something so awful and so chilling me almost threw up and pissed myself and I ran full sprint back towards the old woman's house in pitch black night. I couldn't handle it I admit it. This is no joke the spirit world is very real and I am not cut out for this. All I can add is to is hearing a storm of profanity as bare heart continued on alone. I will also be honest and say that had I not left the keys to my vehicle up with bare heart I would have drove off without him. I have told him this and he has accepted my apology. I spent the next couple of hours in the old woman's backyard, until the sun began to rise. Scared out of my mind I hiked back up to where I left Bearheart. I found him still naked sitting on a rock smoking a cigar. He told me the sun's rays chase away phantoms and that it was safe to come back. He made me strip naked and stand in the sun's rays and ask Apollo to cleanse me of my fears and to remove any dark spirits that may have attached themselves to me while I was out of the circle.
Bearheart says he can't remember much of what happened, real possessions often block out memory. He did say that St. George was able to ride in and free the human spirits trapped here. I want to tell you all that this has been the most profound experience I have ever had. The old woman cried and cried when I told her what happened. She says that her grandmother was the last of her people that have to place a child in the cave and that a deep shame felt like it left her heart last night. We will stay here for the time being and decide what to do next. Bearheart is okay, smoking another cigar and drinking some beer. It's with his permission I post this on his channel and he said to let everyone know that courage is the lion's roar, that the astrological sign of Leo and Hercules are connected and if you invite the spirit of Hercules into your life and ask him with a sincere heart to help make you a stronger man or woman that he will and that over time you can develop the heart of a lion and do that exact same thing he did, that he is not special, or different. Just fully convinced that humans are the rightful owners of this planet and we are meant to live free and proud. Thank you for listening to me experiences so far.